It's Tuesday at Le Giornate del Cinema Muto, the Pordenone Silent Film Festival, of course, our 43rd edition. This afternoon, we kick off with another film in the Ben Carré program. This is The Pride of the Clan, directed by Maurice Turner. And we're really excited because the film has been seen only in relatively worn copies for a very long time. But it's thanks to David Pierce and the Mary Pickford Foundation that we're able to screen what is ultimately a, a restoration in progress but it, which gives us the opportunity to see a film in the best shape that we've ever seen it, actually. This, of course, was a major film for Mary Pickford and featured very importantly in the unpublished memoirs of Ben Carré. It was a very uh, formative experience for him. And if you read the catalogue notes, you'll discover why. After that, we have a fascinating group of three films which are calling Undersea Adventures, uh, all from the Cinémathèque Française. So two shorts, uh, early cinema shorts uh, all have scenes underwater in submarines, but the main f program uh, uh, in this section is Wonders of the Sea, a film directed by J. Ernest Williamson. And this is uh, now a fairly forgotten title, but at the time it was very important. Williamson and his brother invented a kind of tube that you could be attached to a ship uh, that allowed him to film underwater. And this was used a number of times before Wonders of the Sea came out, but he decided to really make it a, a major part of the film. Uh, he brought the film crew to the Bahamas, to Nassau, uh, and because the sea there was much clearer. Uh, and that's where he filmed this uh, really fascinating hybrid between fiction and documentary. And one of the first films that spends a lot of time underwater looking at marine life entirely complete, but it is the best uh, material that exists. It's going to be a fascinating experience to finally see this on a big screen. After that, Colombia, uh, this country of Colombia in Latin America forms uh, four films from our Latin American program, very rarely screened films, beautifully restored by the archive in uh, Bogota, uh, and we're delighted to have those as well, of course, as I I say delighted a lot, but we really are. Um, in the evening at 9 p.m., one of the Uzbek titles called The Leper. This is a very hard-hitting film, very much tied in with the Soviet ideas of denigrating Uzbek traditional society for the new life that the Soviets were promising. Uh, it is very much a female-centric film, a female empowerment film, you can say, in the sense that the tragedy that befalls the lead female character is because of the inability of Uzbek society at the time to adapt the new regime. We're also, uh, with that uh, performance this evening at 9 p.m., it's accompanied by two musicians who've come from Uzbekistan, and so it will really be fascinating to hear these sounds together with this film, uh, making it a truly authentic uh, moment, uh, both in terms of image and music and sound. Afterwards, we do have a late night screening, which consists of a program of some of the feminist fragments, uh, wonderfully put together by Maggie Hennefeld and Enrique Sabalos. This includes films not just from Europe and the United States, but from India and also, as it was called then, Siam. And the feature, Folly of Vanity, one of my favorite films in the program. This is, comes from a, the only known print that exists in Prague, uh, tinted and toned. It's a deliriously funny mm, society, comedy, a drama with a significant part of it being shot in a fantasy land underwater in Neptune's kingdom. It stars Billy Dove and Jack Mulhall. Betty Blythe is in it as well. It was directed by Morris Elvey and Henry Otto. Henry Otto is the man that did all the fantasy sequences and was known for precisely this kind of film, which was very popular at the time. We think of the Annette Kellerman films, which are all a lost. Not that Henry Otto did any of those. Henry Otto came a little bit later, but he was channeling that kind of undersea, underwater spectacle before, of obviously, uh, uh, Esther Williams. And Folly of Vanity is an absolute pleasure, ridiculous in many, many ways. Some critics complained that it was too vulgar, too many half-draped, uh, almost naked women. I think you'll find it to be an absolute delight. I can't fail to mention tomorrow, Wednesday's morning program, which includes Maurice Turner's The Bluebird, 
with Neil Brand and the harpist Elizabeth Jane Baldry accompanying. Uh, the Bluebird is one of the most charming films uh, of this period from Maurice Tenard and of course Ben Carré. The art direction really is spectacular in this film. And then after that, we have the first of our three-part series on Swedish nature and ethnographic films. These are all films, Wednesday mornings screening, are all films uh, directed by a, a specialist in ornithology. So uh, I think we couldn't be filming this little moment here in a better place uh, with ducks on the water because one of the films indeed involves a duck, an eider duck. There's also a film about a stork and a film about eagles. So this is a, a lovely mo opportunity to understand once again just how diverse silent cinema was at this time. All of the genres that we think of uh, as being happening much later really began, of course, in this period. The Swedish nature films with Gunther Buchwald uh, on the piano will really be an, uh, a, a lovely occasion to uh, commune with nature as we're doing now. Thank you.